Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cyber Planet. My name is Karim Chata, and I am your host. On today's episode, we have a very special guest who is a cybersecurity expert from Tanzania and has been in the industry for several years now. He has previously worked at a financial institution and is currently working at one of the largest telecom in Tanzania. His name is Joel Kazoba. Mr. Joel Karibusana. Thank you very much. Glad to be here, Mr. Karim. So, Mr. Joel, can you please tell us about yourself? My name is Joel Kazoba. I work for Vodacom at the moment, and uh, I have like 15 years of experience, and uh, all of these focused in cybersecurity. So, yeah, yeah. glad to be here. Thank you for the short and brief introduction about yourself. So, we'd like to know how did you get started in cybersecurity? Okay, so um, uh, I went for computer science degree at the University of Dar es Salaam. So uh, as, as, as was, I was progressing with my studies, I gained yeah. an interest in cybersecurity, a strong interest, I can say, in cybersecurity. But again, uh, back in the day, we were to start to go into cybersecurity, you have to like go first be in, in a technology uh, career. So I was an ICT yeah. supervisor, and then I went, I, I worked for a telecom company called Tigo here as an um, yeah. uh, system engineer. And then um, I joined the bank, one of the biggest bank here in Tanzania, NMB, uh, where I started my career in cybersecurity there. They trusted me to build cybersecurity program. And um, uh, I worked with them for a long period of time. I grew in um, uh, NMB. I developed a lot of transformation project there, including building a SOC for them. I developed and I studied a lot in cybersecurity, and um, then I joined Vodacom as a head of cybersecurity. Mm. And later on, I joined uh, Vodacom Group as the head of cybersecurity mm. and assurance. So yeah, I've been in. So I started. I started in technology and then grew in cybersecurity as soon as I became trusted by the bank. So does that mean it's not a must for a person to, let me say, start directly from university, do your undergraduate in cybersecurity, and then directly get a job in uh, cybersecurity? So you can also start out from different roles in uh, technology. Absolutely. So as I said, those were back in the day because specialization um, had not yet kicked in the organizations. You could find one person doing everything. So long as they are IT, fixing computers, uh, troubleshooting <laughs> applications, that is administration. So uh, one person could do everything. So specialization okay. had not started yet. But right now we speak, somebody can come direct from uh, the university and join cybersecurity. It's not, in a, it's, oh. it's not a myth though, as you said, somebody can start as a technology person, as an ICT, as a developer, as system yeah. engineer, any role in IT and then they can grow in cybersecurity later on. As you, can, as, as you know, cybersecurity is uh, somebody who knows the technology enough to protect it or enough yeah. to mis misuse it. So it will give you an advantage if you have an experience in other roles in technology and then focus on cybersecurity later on. But it's not a must. You can just okay. start away, away into cybersecurity so long as you you have curiosity and passion to learn about cybersecurity, you can be able to do it. I'm glad we just, you know, kept things out there for people to understand it's not a must for you to directly get a degree in cybersecurity in order for you to land a role in cybersecurity. For you, Mr. Joel, you mentioned that you're the head of cybersecurity governance and assurance at uh, Vodacom Group. So what does yes. your role really involve? So pivoting from the role of the CISO as a cybersecurity leader at Vodacom Tanzania, yeah. uh, cybersecurity governance and assurance in the Vodacom group is my second role. So I have dual role. In Vodacom group, I deal with those two aspects of cybersecurity, as you, can, you said in the title, governance yeah. and assurance. In the governance, the role requires to be able to evolve the cybersecurity framework, and in the assurance, the role requires to look after the uh, implementation uh, of the controls, ensuring that they are implemented as they are supposed to be implemented. So governance, yeah. the structure, and framework of this uh, cybersecurity control, and then assurance, 
validate the implementation of it across Vodacom Group. Thank you for the detailed explanations of what you do. Now, this leads to my next question because majority of the people who are in cybersecurity, they think that cybersecurity generally, it's all about um, hacking, which in, uh, in, in the industry we call red teaming or penetration testing. So I guess up to this point, you already know there are more roles in cybersecurity compared to conventional roles that we are used to, which is red teaming and penetration testing. If somebody wanted to get into the role that you are in right now, what are some of the key skills and qualifications are needed for this role? Okay, the, the main one is understanding cybersecurity, cybersecurity frameworks in general. Understanding how cybersecurity should work together, the model or operating model of cybersecurity, what should sit where and uh, at what particular time. So understanding, general understanding of cybersecurity. And another yeah. skill which is very important is understanding cyber risks. You need to be able to understand the risks, not only the, the framework of risk, but rather risks associated with business. What are the cyber risks associated with that particular business? And yeah. uh, to be able to do threat modeling that is tailored to a location, for instance, dealing with the nine markets in Vodacom, cyber risks that are at Tanzania are not particularly the same as cyber risks that uh, you can have in Mozambique. Depending yeah. on the business environment, so understanding the business environment and the operating mode of cyber security, as well as the cyber security in general, uh, governances and controls framework, uh, those are the key skills for you to be able to pursue the uh, security governance and assurance. Um, another aspect, okay, you mentioned about not necessarily to start in ready teaming, but for you to understand, because systems are not secure unless tested. So it's yeah, crucial sure. for you how to uh, be able to audit information uh, systems, to be able to audit from the cybersecurity yeah. point. And even those red teaming are also part of the assurance. Uh, be able to give assurance to an organization, you need to be able to justify that the information system is uh, implemented as it was supposed to be implemented. Yeah. yeah so in a nutshell, general knowledge of cybersecurity is essential, general knowledge of, of business and uh, uh, cyber risks is essential for, for, for that uh, particular role. So does that mean that all the skills that you're going to acquire along the way are very essential? So for example, I myself, for over half a decade, I've been doing consultation, including penetration testing and vulnerability assessment. So does that mean also those skills can be used to become part of the security governance and assurance uh, role? Absolutely. You know, well, one thing that I might not be able to say is when I became yeah. capable of being in this role. You understand? So okay. the cumulative um, knowledge that I've gained ever since I've joined the industry is the mm -hmm. one that actually helped me to be in this role. I've been a security engineer. I've been a penetration tester. I've been yeah. um, analyst. I've been, I've been all these roles that are helping me actually to shape the framework. And um, when yeah. I say the framework, you know what it entails, right? It entails yeah. every particular control that it's required to protect an organization. Anything you do in cybersecurity has to belong to a certain control. Let's say vulnerability management. Vulnerability management is yeah. a control. Patch management is a control. System testing yeah. and verification is a control. DevSecOps yeah. is a control. All of those, understanding them, even group them into relatable uh, mandatory requirement so you group requirement into a certain control, knowing how they work together and how they yeah. relate to another control is key and essential to performing this role. The experience that you have gained are essential. Bear in mind, this is a leadership role. So long okay. as you have that broad understanding of uh, security framework, you will have hmm. people who you will be uh, directing them on what to do and uh, how okay. to do. Uh, oh. And being a leadership role, you know, a leader is yeah. responsible to ensure there is leadership always. So uh, you can't know everything, <laughs> so, but you yeah. can be able to work in a team and um, accomplish uh, the roles. Dealing with, let's say, more than 50 controls, right? Is yeah. I'm not expert for each and every control. 
So in each and every market, each and every domain, there are uh, subject matter expertise that are responsible of implementing or designing the configuration of particular control. The only role yeah. that I have is well, that everything works together as it was designed to work together. And there are, are no loose ends. That's why assurance. There are no loose yeah. ends. It's evolving according to the landscape. Always um, ears and eyes out there looking for what's um, it's going on and how we can be able to adapt our framework mm. uh, in response to whatever going on there. So everything that yeah. you learn in cybersecurity can be able to help you uh, go into the role that I'm I've mentioned. So th this has been very, very informative because I am also trying to find ways to transition into governance, risk and compliance, but I've never really understood how am I going to get there. But at least now I'm getting an eye opener on uh, this perspective. But I'd also like to get your inputs when it comes to soft skills. What do you think is the importance of soft skills? Very important. So, OK. I'll respond to that in accordance to my role at Vodacom Tanzania as the head of okay. cybersecurity so of yeah. Vodacom Tanzania. I'm like 80% a business leader, 20% cybersecurity expert or um, security engineer. Uh, okay. So as, as the rest of the leaders in the organization, I'm supposed to have that business understanding uh, as the rest. It's just okay. that... I happen to have interest in cybersecurity, which helps mm. me ensure the program is implemented well. Now, mm. uh, when I talk about the leadership, leadership plus soft skills. Leadership okay. needs soft skills. And then um, <laughs> you need to ensure that you can be able to understand the business dynamics, okay. formulate your information security program according to mm. the business dynamics without compromising the integrity or the uh, strength of the information security program and be able to mm -hmm. communicate the same to the business for them to understand exactly what cybersecurity, why cybersecurity, and mm -hmm. where cybersecurity uh, Because yeah. cybersecurity is a technical domain. So if you don't have the soft skills to be able to communicate, to be able to engage your stakeholders well, and to um, ensure that they gain attraction into the information security program, you mm. will fail. And then according to the role at group, head of cyber mm. security assurance, yeah. you know, this role is a vertical, gets across nine markets. In yeah. that aspect, you're dealing with our heads of cyber security across various entities, various okay. countries, you're dealing with various uh, chief information, uh, chief technology officers, the CTOs, you're mm. dealing with MDs, um, uh, managing directors and CEOs across various entities, various okay. countries. Mm. Now, you understand the formalities or the modalities of getting things done across various entities. You yeah. are supposed to influence. You are supposed to ensure that everybody get uh, your program get by. You can't get mm. by. In so to me, in cybersecurity, especially in leadership yeah. role, soft skills is a must. Although yeah. you're supposed to understand the technology and know the, 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 the cybersecurity um, uh, technical aspect, but soft skill is a must because it's also the one that helps you even communicate cyber risks. How can you communicate yeah. cyber risks if you cannot link them into the business risks? And how can you mm. link them without having your soft skills? So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a very important, I can, I can add to that. So basically uh, what you're saying generally is there, there needs to be a balance between you knowing the technical and also gaining the soft skills specifically for this role of uh, GRC. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Assume that Karim right now wants to get into GRC what advice that we will give Karim who is trying to get into this role and doesn't know anything about this role? Okay, so first of all, start gaining interest with business. Understand how okay. business works. For instance, mm -hmm. um, if you want to be um, um, a governance risky and compliance officer at Vodacom, mm -hmm. let's say, start understanding what Vodacom does. What are the products for Vodacom? 
the fintech aspect of Vodacom, which is M-Pesa. What is the business actually produced to the clients? Understand the, the business aspect. And then yeah. start understanding the cyber risks, the cyber security risk frameworks, the likes of ISO 27005. Um, uh, for instance, there are some certifications from ISACA, the C-Risk key, uh, GRC yeah. from ISC Square. They give you a mm. blend of knowledge about um, uh, cyber security risks, how to actually identify risks, measure mm. the risk, monitor okay. the risk, communicate the risks. Mm. Uh, and um, when I talk uh, when I when I talk about measure, uh, it goes hand in hand by managing the risks because uh, managing the risks requires you to really understand the business. I, I will tell you an example: um, yeah. a risk that is high at Vodacom. It uh, it might not be equally high at NMB. You know that, right? Yeah. Vodacom is a technology heavy company, mm. and then um, the other company maybe might not be technology heavy company. So. Understanding mm. the business in and out helps you on how to put measures uh, that um, eradicate risks. And then mm. um, be able even to prioritize the risky uh, management. You might be seen as a crazy person if you demand uh, solving something that is not material to the business. Um, and then yet you're <laughs> advising um, to put a lot of money there. That will kill the business. It will not help the business. And cybersecurity, uh, governance, risk, and compliance mm. is a role that a bridge between cyber uh, security and the business. So you are there mm -hmm. as an enabler. You are there mm. to help, not to kill the business. So it's um, yeah. so understanding the business, understanding cyber risks, and actually the controls themselves that helps you to uh, eliminate uh, risks. At the end of the yeah. day, if I am the board of director of a certain organization. Mm. I won't okay. bother which kind of firewalls you have implemented. I won't bother which kind of tool you're using to find and uh, eliminate vulnerability. Yeah. The only thing that I, I would care about is there a way technology can be used to harm my business? Is there a way technology can be used to actually uh, get me out of business? And then yeah. what measures you're putting? What are the top risks that you're working on and how might they require? So those kind of things. Yeah. So you're a very, very busy man. That, that, that's something that I can, I can tell, especially oh. with your double roles that you have. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just trying to understand how do you stay up to date with the ever evolving threats in cybersecurity? First of all, I am active in communities. Active in communities means I always check what's happening on, let's say, LinkedIn. Um, mm. The people that I've connected with share insights. So I make sure that I have connection uh, for, for people who actually share insights like I do to ensure that yeah. I stay, first of all, understanding what's going on in the industry. Yeah. And mm. then I have, I have another tendency of uh, doing something new every day, uh, understanding okay. the technology trends, uh, where we're heading, mm. yeah. training in big companies like Vodafone, AWS. Tesla, Google, what are they doing? What are they doing next? What are the news and the like? So those keeps me up to date. I read books. Um, yeah. uh, another thing I do is um, I study as well. I do certification. I still do certification until now. Just recently, I've, I've done my ISO 27001 uh, senior lead um, uh, risk manager. It, it was very insightful. Yeah, so those keeps me up to date. It's, it takes a lot. Being up to date, staying up with the family, ensuring uh, things are getting done to where I work, it's a lot. Mr. Joel, you mentioned something in particular that sparked my interest, and that is family. So, I'd like to know, how do you balance between work life and family? That's commitment. So, I have put commitment that in the work hours, I work. I work, I work really hard. And I have some hours where it's dedicated to family. Family to me, uh, when it's time for family, it's time for family. And um, mm -hmm. not like I give a lot to the family, but what I've done is I mm -hmm. ensured that the people around me also gain yeah. interest with cybersecurity, meaning that I can enjoy with family while yeah. we are listening to podcasts, cybersecurity post podcast. I can en enjoy with family while we are following up a live cybersecurity event. 
So, um, yeah. so I brought the family into what I love and I can be able to deliver while the, the, the family is also enjoying. But when it comes to a time alone with family, it's family time. So yeah, so I've, I've managed to ensure, I've managed to balance my time by helping them develop interest with cybersecurity and develop interest with what I do as well. Joel, we've had a long and interesting conversation around your role, which is cybersecurity governance and assurance. So now, we'd like to get some insights on the lessons that you have managed to learn on this role. Okay, so uh, the, the first one is um, start. I've learned to understand the world start. There, there is a lot in cybersecurity, a lot, especially when you're dealing with um, a role like this, which looks at uh, uh, risk. Everything is risky. Everything you touch in cybersecurity is risky and it's urgent. Now you mm -hmm. can be into a position where you don't deliver because you have a lot of things to uh, work on. So mm -hmm. choose something that's priority and start working on it. Deliver, make sure that you get things done. Another thing, another insight, this goes to uh, everyone that is interested in cybersecurity or is starting in cybersecurity. Okay. There are, okay, so most of, most of people think cybersecurity is hard, right? It mm. is perceived hard. But uh, to be honest, you can survive with simple and basic things. Yeah. Mm. So uh, right now, everybody's panicking. AI. Uh, um, um you 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 hear people say zero trust uh you hear yeah. people have a jargon in cyber security but do you have an antivirus do you patch your system do you mm. have a segregated network those are basic things that you're supposed to be doing in cyber security ensuring that you're secure and then you develop slowly into the complex thing and complex stuff so get the best things done Mm -hmm. Learn the basics and start doing. The rest will come along because um, uh, so once, for instance, once you have um, arranged your risk, you have prioritized your risk. If you start, you will make sure the top three risks are, are, are done. And then once that are done, yeah. you move down the, the, the list. Other, yeah. other top three are done. All the way to the yeah. complex stuff which have low risk uh as compared to the basic stuff so my insight just start with the basics and you will start learning because you might be thinking how can i get into cyber security how can i get all the way to the CISO role all the way to the multinational roles but if you don't start yeah. you 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 even um you, you will not even get there where you're going so start and then do the basics joel i understand that you're a very busy man and you have a lot on your plate and perhaps right now you could be fighting some cyber threats on your network. <laughs> well, I don't know. But before we end the podcast, I'd like to get your final thoughts. Okay. So first of all, I really appreciate uh, inviting me to uh, this podcast. I really appreciate because, you know, as I said, I have a passion of speaking, discussing cybersecurity, sharing insight to the, um, to the industry, uh, mentoring young. So my final thoughts is whoever is listening to this, cyber risks are borderless. So uh, you don't need to think that somebody in Russia cannot get to where you are in Tanzania, in Kenya, or in Uganda. So uh, yeah, pay attention to what you're sharing online. Pay attention to uh, how you have secured your basic things like your social media and the likes. Um, yeah. um, make sure you practice uh, good cyber hygiene. And then mm -hmm. um, if you are interested in cyber security, it's doable. There are people you can follow that can be able to show you the way and you can really start and do some wonders in the industry. We are very few, but we, are, we have, we are, we're never too late. Um, there are causes that you can take that can help you uh, shape your skill and be able to be a very uh, big, uh, uh, big expert or expert in cybersecurity. You mentioned about red teaming. It's really important to our industry because, you know, red teaming is an interesting part of cybersecurity. 
do it if you have, uh, you have passion for it. Along the way, while you are doing engagements, you find yourself that red teaming is not enough. But how could you have found uh, uh, that aspect if you, you, you didn't start? So as I said, start uh, with what you're passionate about, and then it will take you, it will draw you into the things that you might be not passionate about, but you didn't know before, and you will find them important to get them done. So I really appreciate your time, Karim. Okay, frankly speaking, I think I'm the one who should be grateful to you for clearing your busy schedule. But before we end this insightful session, I'd like to give a recap of what we discussed. First, you need to start. Second, you need to understand the basics, simply because it's the foundation to your advanced skills. Third, get your hands-on experience. Fourth, the role of cybersecurity governance and assurance is mostly a leadership role. Fifth, you don't have to have a cybersecurity degree to be in cybersecurity. Sixth, soft skills are important. Example, good communication skills. This skill will enable you to easily communicate your findings to different stakeholders. And finally, seventh, keep learning. Mr. Joel, happy to have you on this podcast and it is to my hope that someone got inspired by you. See you guys in the next episode. Cheers.